The world of computing is on the cusp of a revolution, fueled by the enigmatic principles of quantum mechanics. At the heart of this revolution lies the qubit, the quantum counterpart of the classical bit. Today, we will delve into how these qubits are created. Qubits harness the strangeness of the quantum world to exist in a superposition, simultaneously embodying both zero and one. This unique characteristic unlocks unprecedented computational power, promising to transform fields ranging from medicine and material science to cryptography and artificial intelligence. This ability allows quantum computers to perform calculations at an exponentially faster rate than classical computers for certain types of problems. The implications of this quantum leap are profound. Now let's dive into various ways of developing qubits. Among the most promising candidates in the race to build powerful quantum computers are superconducting qubits. These marvels of engineering leverage the bizarre phenomenon of superconductivity, where certain materials at ultra-low temperatures exhibit zero electrical resistance. Imagine a current flowing endlessly in a loop without any loss of energy. That's the magic of superconductivity. Superconducting qubits exploit this property by creating tiny circuits where the current flow, or lack thereof, represents the qubit state. Just like a light switch can be either on or off, these circuits can be manipulated to hold a zero or a one. But here's where the quantum magic kicks in. They can also exist in a superposition, a blurry state of being both zero and one at the same time. One of the leading examples of superconducting qubits is the transmon qubit. Picture a tiny metal island connected to its surroundings by a thin insulating junction. This island, kept incredibly cold just a hair's breadth above absolute zero, becomes superconducting. The number of Cooper pairs electrons that pair up in the superconducting state on this island determines the qubit's energy state and thus its value, zero or one or both at once. Controlling these transmon qubits is like conducting an orchestra of electrons. By applying carefully calibrated microwave pulses, scientists can nudge the qubit between its energy levels, essentially writing information onto it. These qubits, while incredibly sensitive to their environment and prone to decoherence, offer remarkable control and scalability, making them a cornerstone of many quantum computing efforts today. Imagine trapping individual atoms, those fundamental building blocks of matter, and harnessing their quantum properties for computation. This is the essence of ion trap quantum computing, a technique that employs electric fields to confine ions atoms with a net electrical charge in a vacuum. These trapped ions, suspended in a delicate balance of electromagnetic forces, serve as the qubits. Picture a tiny intricate cage made of electric fields holding a single atom captive. This atom, stripped of or given an extra electron, becomes an ion. Its energy levels, dictated by the laws of quantum mechanics, represent the qubit's zero and one states. Just like an electron in an atom can occupy different energy levels, these trapped ions can be excited to higher energy levels and then fall back down, emitting light that reveals their quantum state. To control these trapped ions, scientists use lasers with exquisite precision. By shining lasers of specific frequencies, they can manipulate the ion's energy levels, essentially writing information onto it. These laser pulses act as the gates in this quantum computer, performing operations on the qubits. Measuring the state of these trapped ions is equally elegant. By shining a laser and observing the light emitted, scientists can determine the qubit's state, a zero or a one, or perhaps a ghostly superposition of both. Ion trap quantum computing boasts impressive coherence times, the length of time a qubit can maintain its quantum state, making it a leading contender in the quest for fault-tolerant quantum computers. However, scaling up ion trap systems to accommodate the thousands or even millions of qubits needed for practical applications remains a formidable challenge. In the world of quantum computing, even tiny imperfections can become powerful tools. Quantum dots, semiconductor nanostructures just a few billionths of a meter across, are a testament to this principle. These artificial atoms confine electrons, forcing them to behave like waves trapped in a box. This well traps electrons, restricting their movement in all three dimensions. These energy levels form the basis for the qubit's zero and one states. Scientists use electric and magnetic fields to control these quantum dot qubits. By applying voltages, they manipulate the energy levels, writing information onto the qubit. 
quantum dot qubits, easily integrated with existing semiconductor techniques, are promising for large-scale quantum computing. Light, the fastest thing in the universe, also holds the potential to revolutionize computing. Photonic quantum computing harnesses the quantum properties of light particles called photons to perform computations. These massless particles of light, zipping around at the speed of light, offer a unique platform for building quantum computers. Imagine a single photon, a tiny packet of light energy, traversing a network of optical components. This photon, its polarization representing the qubit's zero or one state, can be manipulated and measured using mirrors, beam splitters, and other optical devices. These components act as the gates in this quantum computer, performing operations on the qubits. One of the key advantages of photonic quantum computing is its remarkable coherence. Photons, unlike other qubit candidates, interact very weakly with their environment, making them less susceptible to decoherence. This inherent robustness makes them ideal for transmitting quantum information over long distances, a crucial requirement for building large-scale, interconnected quantum computers. Measuring the state of a photonic qubit involves detecting the polarization of the photon. Light, like waves in an ocean, can oscillate in different directions. This oscillation direction known as polarization can be used to represent the qubit's zero and one states. By passing the photon through polarizing filters and measuring its intensity, scientists can determine its polarization state and thus the qubit's value. Photonic quantum computing, while still in its early stages of development, holds immense promise for building large-scale, fault-tolerant quantum computers. Its compatibility with existing fiber optic infrastructure and the potential for room temperature operation make it an exciting area of exploration in the world of quantum computing. If you found this information useful, please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more content on quantum computing.